In the vast darkness of space, a capsule remains stranded in low Earth orbit. No one knows how to bring it back, while astronauts are stuck on the ISS. This is the situation that Starliner astronauts are currently facing. A terrifying scenario like something out of a Hollywood sci-fi movie. But this is the present reality before us. After too many technical issues, NASA realized they needed a different solution to rescue their astronauts. So, what is the current status of the Starliner? Has NASA finally decided to choose SpaceX's Dragon to rescue them? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The cursed spacecraft Starliner seems to be getting worse. In fact, as we mentioned in our previous reports, NASA and Boeing officials were initially reluctant, even refusing, to use SpaceX's Dragon to rescue the astronauts Starliner sent to the ISS. They believe Starliner could safely return in any emergency situation. However, a recent action by NASA has dispelled this notion. NASA is indeed concerned about Starliner. On July 15th, NASA published a new document on the website fbds.gov. This study, titled Special Study for Emergency Response, is worth $266,000 and may be an amendment to the commercial crew contract. Although we don't know many details, it can be accurately speculated that NASA is exploring whether Crew Dragon can be quickly launched in an emergency. The results of this study will be very interesting. SpaceX may need to prepare for emergencies by 1. prioritizing the use of Dragon spacecraft and nearly refurbed Falcon 9 boosters, 2. quickly converting scheduled missions to emergency road, which could delay other missions, and 3. always keeping an empty Dragon spacecraft and a fueled Falcon 9 booster on standby at the launch pad. I don't mean to suggest that there's definitely a problem with Starliner, but it is a possibility, and what NASA has tasked SpaceX with is a contingency plan to avoid astronauts getting stranded on this space station in the future. So what do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. All right, let's continue. In addition to NASA's latest move, Boeing engineers have also announced the completion of tests on the backup thrusters on the surface to identify the cause of the incident. However, in the joint meeting, we still haven't gotten any info about the return date of the two astronauts, indicating that the completion of ground tests has not yet yielded any effective results. Despite negative speculation in the space community, NASA officials remain very confident, in front of the media at least. We collected an incredible amount of data on the thruster that could help us better understand what's going on in flight, said NASA's commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch in a NASA update. Next, our teams moved into engine teardowns and inspections, which will provide additional insights as we analyze the results and evaluate next steps. The helium leaks seem to have caused several of the Starliner's thrusters to overheat, throwing its ability to navigate back to Earth in doubt. NASA, however, has maintained that Starliner would still be able to safely return Williams and Wilmore in case of an emergency. What we have found in this flight is that we fired the thrusters more than expected, and I would say more frequently, Stitch said in a statement last week. When I say frequently, I'm talking about how close you fire an individual thruster pulse next to the pulse of that thruster. What we're trying to do at White Sands is really replicating exactly what those pulses were that those thrusters saw, and then understanding the heating effects from those pulses, and then make sure there's no unintended consequences of the pulses, he added. Well, confidence is good, but let's hope everything goes as everyone wishes and that our beloved astronauts remain unharmed. I don't want to compare, but I gotta say, SpaceX's approach is truly worlds apart from what Boeing's doing. Instead of spending many years on theoretical models and computer simulations, SpaceX focuses on real-world testing and tackling the major issues. This method helps them identify problems early, like the faulty seal issue, whereas Boeing only discovered it after they already were up in space. The design of the Dragon spacecraft is also quite impressive. It can glide and fly upon re-entry into the atmosphere, rather than relying solely on heat shields and thrusters like traditional spacecraft. Elon frequently participates in the development process, encouraging the team to focus on important issues and not waste time on minor details until they become necessary during real-world testing. This way of working allows SpaceX to progress rapidly and achieve results at a much lower cost compared to competitors like Boeing. With this incident involving Starliner, Boeing and NASA are trying to make a positive impact by showing that they're testing the necessary systems for longer Starliner missions. But the project has already suffered several delays. Having originally been set to lift off for the first time with crew in 2017, this combined with the latest problems raises questions over the whole Starliner program. Starliner was noted as having a small helium leak before it even launched. Helium is an inert gas, meaning that it is very unreactive with other materials. 
This makes it ideal when coming into contact with rocket fuel in high temperatures, although producing it is a pretty expensive process. It's pressurized and used to push fuel into the engines at the correct rate. Helium leaks can mean that not enough fuel is going to reach a thruster. The leak spotted while Starliner was on the launch pad was determined to be negligible, and the spacecraft got sent to orbit regardless. However, this turned into a bigger problem when additional helium leaks were identified after launch, meaning that several of the spacecraft's small maneuvering thrusters could not be used. Four of the five thrusters have been repaired while Starliner has been docked to the ISS, but it raises the concern about other thrusters cutting out during the return journey to Earth. On Starliner's return, re-entering Earth's atmosphere requires a very specific angle of attack to ensure that there's not too much friction heating up the vessel. An inability to adjust the orientation of the craft or the orbital parameters for re-entry could, in the worst-case scenario, result in massive heat buildup and the destruction of the aircraft with two astronauts on board. Yikes! There are additional thrusters and other so-called redundancies, backup systems designed into the spacecraft. So, this is still a very unlikely scenario. However, so were the helium leaks. While Boeing and NASA have considered it safe to return on Starliner, it's perfectly conceivable that the astronauts might have some trepidation and anxiety, and rightfully so, especially as these issues didn't happen on the uncrewed test flights. The next particular problem is that Starliner returns and jettisons its service module on re-entry as it returns to the surface on land rather than at sea, like the Russian spacecraft Soyuz and SpaceX's Dragon capsules do. This means that the bit of the spacecraft with all the vital information on it is going to get burned up, making it very difficult to determine actually what went wrong. Currently, even though NASA and Boeing have done all the testing on their thrusters, there's still no confirmation about the true cause of the incident. What we'll be waiting for next is for them to complete the ongoing tests simultaneously on the ISS. The astronauts made it up to the ISS and are safe there. While it's likely that Starliner is going to return to Earth should a major fault be discovered while it's docked to the ISS, there are other return vehicles that can be used to ferry the two crew members safely back home. The astronauts' safety will no doubt be paramount in the minds of both the agency and the industry. But this is not the first problem with Starliner. The vehicle suffered major delays since its conception as part of the commercial crew program back in 2010. The contract indicated Starliner should be ready by 2017, with a two-year delay before the first successful unmanned launch in 2022. There was a failed attempt in 2019. The made crew launch was then delayed by a month. These delays indicate Boeing is falling behind its major commercial competitor, SpaceX, which won a contract at the same time as Boeing did in 2010 to build vehicles that could transport the crew to the ISS. SpaceX successfully launched a crewed mission with the Dragon capsule in 2020. To give an indication of the success, Crew Dragon is currently completing its fifth manned mission to the ISS and has also done 30 cargo missions. Boeing's been a major player in space missions with NASA for decades, playing a huge role in their space shuttle program, for example. This relationship continues the company's role in the space launch system rocket that'll send astronauts on their way to the moon. The company's been one of the biggest and most admired contractors in the whole aerospace industry. However, these problems with Starliner come not long after widely publicized incidents with Boeing aircraft, so the corporation could do very well without any further problems with its spacecraft to add to its woes. Starliner has spent over 50 days in space, far exceeding the initial plan of just about eight days. That's more than six times the expected period. And this raises lots of questions about the future of this spacecraft. Boeing and NASA are likely facing significant challenges in maintaining the Starliner project. With increasing difficulties, is Boeing considering giving up on this project? And how has NASA reacted to the current situation? After many weeks of troubleshooting and tests to simulate the issues occurring with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, the latest press conference on 25th revealed that the results from NASA and Boeing are unchanged. Starliner is still not ready to set a return date for the two astronauts on its first manned test flight. We don't have a major announcement today relative to, uh, to a return date, said NASA commercial crew program manager Steve Stitch. Starliner's return to Earth has been repeatedly delayed since its initial planned re-entry about a week after launch. It was then pushed to no earlier than June 18th, then June 22nd, then June 25th, now late July. Now Starliner and its crew aren't expected back until August at the earliest. This is an outcome that disappoints almost everyone, but it's clear we anticipated this. The issues with Starliner are not trivial. They have become, or perhaps were from the beginning, more serious than ever. 
Honestly, I don't want to think this way, but looking at the press conference about Boeing's first flight, it seems evident that NASA and Boeing never mentioned the main issues, kind of like they're trying to cover up deeper problems. Perhaps officials fear that openly admitting the current journey is too risky or would spur more sensationalist news. Or maybe NASA's leaders just want to protect Boeing. After all, they do plan to send up more crews on Skyliner, and any sign of disappointment from the space agency could erode public confidence in their already troubled contractor. NASA would do better if they embrace the uncertainty instead of avoiding it. To borrow a mantra from the agency itself, the first manned flight of Skyliner is a test mission. Unusual events, they're predictable, and NASA believes that they are well-equipped to handle them. But no matter what, only time's going to tell. If NASA and Boeing can't step it up, they're going to have to turn to alternative means to safely bring the astronauts back home. And no one can do this but SpaceX. If this happens, Starliner will officially face a disastrous failure in its entire development program, and its future will be... Yeah, of course, there will be no future. Starliner is still too flawed to continue with manned missions to the ISS. However, even if Starliner succeeds in the return, its future development is fraught with difficulties, and it still has the potential to get canceled. Why is that? Well, we can see that there are not many Boeing officials speaking up to defend their ship. Space is just a part of Boeing's defense, space, and security business unit. And in Boeing's revenue by sector in 2023, BDS just generated 32% of the company's revenue at nearly $25 billion. Bucks. It's worth noting that $25 billion are also made up of non-space activities like contracts for the military helicopters, fighter jets, and munitions. Meanwhile, the company's financial strength lies in its commercial aircraft business, which brought in nearly $33 billion, or 44% of 2023's revenue. When Boeing's commercial planes encountered a series of troubles, costing the company at least $32 billion since 2019 and no end in sight, it was a major blow to the over 100-year-old firm. Economically, Boeing's Starliner shows no profit, with prolonged heavy losses, and now the company has to bear the costs themselves as the government can no longer fund them. This is not to mention other issues like technical problems with the spacecraft, which are very difficult for Boeing to solve even down the road, and competition in the launch market with dominant rivals like SpaceX's Dragon. These points raise questions about the future of Boeing Starliner spacecraft manufacturing niche. Overall, I assess that Starliner's program does not have a long-term path. Even if Boeing has to abandon Starliner, it's not going to be significantly impacted financially. This is provided that the company fulfills the six missions assigned under the commercial crew contract that was awarded by NASA. On the other hand, NASA needs to recognize Boeing no longer wants Starliner to compete and should therefore focus on collabing with SpaceX to further develop the Dragon spacecraft. Boeing's also shown a lack of focus in their space sector, as evidenced by their agreement to sell ULA, a joint venture rocket manufacturing and launch company, as a first step. The Starliner program will be the next step. So, what do you think of this speculation? Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're at it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. All right. In addition to the announcement that there's no return date for the two astronauts, the press conference 25th from NASA and Boeing's leadership also gave us some possible answers about the causes of Starliner's problems in the first leg of this journey, including helium leaks and thrusters suddenly dropping on the way to the ISS. These revelations came after Boeing and NASA spent the last few weeks investigating the real issues and planning for additional tests, which will serve as a highlight to better understand the problems, said Mark Nappy, Boeing's commercial crew program director. At a site in New Mexico, engineers fired test engines more than a thousand times, replicating how the thrusters on the space-bound Starliner would have ignited. They then fired the thruster to try out several ways the engines might fire on the way home from space, according to Boeing. The goal of this testing was to gain a better understanding of why the spacecraft's thrusters unexpectedly shut down and what, if any, dangers are associated with turning those thrusters back on. Officials said that they were able to recreate how the thrusters in space deteriorated during flight with the ground tests. The testing may have helped give engineers a better understanding of the issue's root cause. Heat building up inside the thrusters may be causing Teflon seals to bulge, restricting the flow of propellant. The testing has given us additional confidence to undock and return, Nappy said.
The findings also prompted Boeing and NASA to abandon plans to allow astronauts to manually fly the Starliner spacecraft on the way home, as they did briefly on the way up to the ISS. Some of the manual maneuvering put some extra stress on the thrusters, Stitch said. Still, officials did not definitively say Thursday that Starliner spacecraft is what carried veteran NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to the space station, and if it'd be the same vehicle that brought him back home. There's a lot of good reasons to complete this mission and bring Butch and Suni home on Starliner. Starliner said after noting that NASA does have contingency options if Starliner does not get the approval to bring the astronauts back. We need to get through the process, he added. We have another critical Starliner mission management team to review all the thruster data we just talked about. Of course, I'm very confident we have a good vehicle to bring the crew back with, Nappy said. Williams and Will Moore arrived at the International Space Station June 6th for what was expected to be a roughly week-long mission. As of Thursday, the astronauts have been in space for about 50 days. NASA has indicated that Starliner can stay in space for a maximum of 90 days. Separately, engineers have made headway in understanding helium leaks that hampered the first leg of Starliner's journey. But Boeing and NASA will take a close look at the issue again during additional testing of the vehicle in space, though it will continue this weekend, Stitch said. The testing will include the firing of 27 Starliner thrusters while the vehicle remains docked at the ISS. Analysis of components on the ground, specifically a version of the Starliner service module that's been sitting in White Sands, New Mexico for three years, has showed that the helium leaks may be a result of seals that have gotten degraded because of exposure to propellant vapor, according to Nappy. The natural fix is to just change that seal out to a material that's not so susceptible to being worn down by exposure by the propellant, Nappy said referring to possible changes that Boeing can make for future Starliner missions. Still ahead, however, is work to determine whether the leaks on board the Starliner that's already in space have gotten worse as the vehicles remain docked at the ISS. Because the service module, that's the portion of the spacecraft plagued by the helium leaks, on the ground was exposed to propellant for so long. Nappy said it could offer a worst-case understanding of how badly the seals can be degraded. The ongoing effort to understand the helium leak is among the chief reasons why NASA and Boeing still aren't able to give us a return date for Williams and Wilmore, or a definitive answer on whether Starliner is ready to fly him back home. The key attributes of the flight rationale really are that we understand the helium leaks. We understand the stability of the leaks and how we can manage those should they get bigger, Stitch said, referring to the possibility that the leaks affecting the Starliner service module may worsen. NASA and Boeing plan to carry out a review to plan for Starliner's undocking, which could come as late next week, according to Stitch. We certainly hope that works out. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.